Listening to the recent Sam Harris discussion with Max Tegemark about AI, consciousness, the brain, and technology, I was moved to bring up this point. There is the juncture at which Sam and Max are talking about this being the moment. Max highlights this idea. The only moment we have to decide what direction AI is going to take. Because as the industry and the technology and the science and the intelligence on AI is moving forward, it will never run backward. And so we have to decide now what the questions are and how the research is going to proceed in order to make sure that AI brings us into a safe future and not a cataclysm. While there are some people who think that the timeline, the progress arc, is so high and long and broad and the result of AI being so powerful and conscious that we have to be concerned about it is so much out of our reach that we don't have to worry about it. Most of the people concerned about AI, about AI um, Sam Harris, Max Tegemark, um, not Brooks, uh, but um, Steve Wozniak, um, Stephen Hawking, um, I'm not ma mentioning some of the major intellectual luminaries who are concerned about it because I hear their names only in passing. They don't uh, broadcast their feelings as, as much as someone like Sam Harris, and so I'm less familiar with them and I have to do more research. But the majority of people who are concerned about AI, Elon Musk, for example, are absolutely certain that we have to listen to Max Tegemark and we have to invest our minds and our governments and our time and regulation and our investigation into how AI is going to turn out right now because if we don't it's just going to take the course that it takes and here's the point I want to make to luminaries like Sam Harris and Max Tegemark your comments while you Max are a professor at MIT and your accomplishments show that uh, you've reached a much higher level of accomplishment in intelligence than I may ever have, same with Sam Harris, uh, are lacking something. You just have to look at history. Uh, I haven't done the research on this, but my common sense is telling me that I'm going to say something correct. Look at any development in history, whether it's electricity or flight, the automobile, uh, the Industrial Revolution, Revolution as powered by coal, Look at any development. None of them stopped to foresee what the damage was going to be. And if they had, they didn't do it successfully because every development left millions dead. If, if you just take coal, if you take electricity, we may have taken precautions to build these things safely. We didn't take precautions to make sure that they wouldn't wind up killing millions of people. Of course, all of our weapons research, atomic energy, all of these things have left a trail of human carnage. And I don't see any reason why AI won't. Simply because, even as we talk about them, uh, as Sam Harris said in his TED Talk, as you said, Sam, in your TED Talk, um, it's not as exciting to talk about death by um, natural causes or death by politics or death by this, that, or the other thing, but it's very exciting to talk about death by AI. The Terminator was successful and other movies like it. All dystopian science fiction is popular because people think it's fun. And this disconnect between the reality that we face, or the very high probable reality that we face, and our responsibility toward it has been with us throughout history. And that's why we've laid waste to humanity, even building railroads, as as Louis C.K. joked, we just throw human suffering at a question and we arrive at the pyramids, we arrive at great cities, we arrive at mass transportation. Now many people will say, oh, but that's because of mistakes, not design. Well, AI isn't going to be designed to kill anybody, but as we know, as you're telling us, AI is going to kill millions if nothing is done. It's going to destabilize economies, it's going to destabilize the workforce, it's going to throw millions of people out of work. And if we haven't made provisions for that, they're going to die. It's 
easy to look at the healthcare situation, how Congress just blithely went along and wanted to get rid of people on healthcare or get rid of healthcare and the people on it, um, thinking that, well, we'll just find a way later because people's self-interest drives them. Oh, it's interesting to me and I'm not immediately threatened. I'm going to support this. Oh, I can make a million dollars on just the first six months of research on this. I'm going to support it. Oh, self-driving cars. That was something that you talked about. Uh, there were only so many deaths. That's one of the things that you talked about. Sam talked about how he thought that uh, the brakes would be put on this endeavor, you know, at extreme speed and with, with abandon once the first few deaths occurred from self-driving car research. And they didn't because people don't care. I made the point much more succinctly a few weeks ago when I tweeted to all of you and I said, uh, we can't get people to solve the moral problem in murdering thousands and thousands of people with drones. How are we going to get machines to make these moral decisions? We won't. We'll design it, but we won't implement the system to such a degree that it saves the lives I'm talking about. AI, like everything else, is going to leave a trail of carnage. Unless we actually have the moral discussions about machines and software that we're not willing to have about people. We can't agree on a, a worldwide human framework in the enforcement of human rights. We're not going to worry about it in the human's development of machines that will take away human rights. And that's the future we face.